corners of the universe which have read the most terrible things, things which act against everything that we believe in. They must be fought. You know my name. Look up the number. Welcome to Time Round. Uh, tonight, we are looking at the Patrick Troughton classic, The Moon, but I've gone staccato. I've gone staccato. Oh, terrifying, yeah. 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 I'm not in tonight. Okay. I'm trying to win a bit <laughs> We all go shatner sometimes. Yay. Yay. Excellent. Okay. Cautious yay. Cautious. This new camera does just, yeah. just seems to be going crazy with the... Auto easy with, yellow. Let's call this an easy focus yellow. Focus thing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Easy yellow, and welcome to the time base. Welcome to the no, time, time base. What the fuck am I saying? <laughs> what the fuck? I can do it if you like. Oh, it's right. a cross <laughs> between time ram and moon base. <laughs> uh. Good evening, and welcome to Time Ram, which is a podcast. It is presented by three gentlemen. My name is Barry Williams. With me tonight, I have Rupert Booth. Oh, he's a jolly good fellow. <laughs> and Paul Ferry. Hello. And we are looking at Doctor Who. Doctor yes. Who is a television program. Yes, it is. I didn't tell it's all scary, and we're looking at Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> What's television, Baz? Television? television is a box that sits in the corner of the room. It's not really a box my mind. Is it? It's more mm -hmm. of a flat. It used to be a box. We're now about Yeah, we all still think of it as a box. Culturally yeah. to us, it's a box. It's cheap. Yeah. Yeah. These days, it's a panel. Yeah. It's a panel. Room. That's, that's yeah. a word. Yeah, not, not a flat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you that set building, so flats. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, and back in uh, 1966, this box, as it was at the time, showed the moon base starring yes. Patrick Trouton. But no longer, because we've changed all that. We've mm. swapped it around. And now it's going to have Tom Baker in it. Mm -hmm. Yay! Mm -hmm. I can. So, what do we think? Well, I think that the initial urge, obviously, is to replace Revenge of the Cybermen with it. Yeah, yeah. that would make you sense. You know, same yeah. one of the same writers, anyway. Um, Cybermen. Yeah. And um, so on and so on. But I was thinking about this earlier, and I thought, does it make more sense to replace the Ark in space with it? Yeah, I. I... Have because it's all studio the bound, yeah. Mm. You know, Revenge of the Cybermen in, ter in terms of storyline, in terms of adversary, yeah, you can see where I'm going. But um, yeah. there's a huge amount of really nice location filming in Wookiee Hole, which just yeah. doesn't have a moon base at all. Mm. Whereas Ark in Space is entirely studio bound, and claustrophobic, and it's kind of a base under siege story. Kind of is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, things that are under doing the sieging are already on the base. Yes, yeah. it's, it's a small part of a base, a room under siege. Yeah. yeah, a room under siege. Yeah, well, we, we could use it to define Tom Baker in the way same way the moon base defines. Yeah, uh, and it, you know, it, it makes it makes production sense. I mean, as far as I remember, Philip Hinchcliffe was a bit irritated that Barry Letts had commissioned Daleks and Cybermen and then left, <laughs> so he was stuck with them for his first season. Yeah, well, it's what RTD would do, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What James yeah. would do is what Verity Lambert would do. Um, you know, you've got a new Doctor, so second story, the Cybermen. You haven't seen them for ages, as well, apart from. Probably knowing all of Tom Baker's first story, still an emesis. Um <laughs> and 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 yeah, you know, you help them launch a new doc. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, time round. The other thing that occurred to me, well, obviously, I mean we've kind of set ourselves up with a slight problem here in that when we did sleep no more, mm. uh, we kind of ripped off large chunks of the moon base. Mm. Yeah. But I mean the good news is the moon is very much a sixties setting. So I mean I think a Tom yeah. Baker story would probably be set, you know, something like Titan or something like that. Mars uh, or Mars could be Mars, Mars space, yeah. Mars, Mars space. space, Mars doesn't actually make any difference to the story at all, does it? No, not much. No, 
I was thinking at one point this week, I was thinking, wouldn't it be great if, uh, you know how, um, you know, Star Maidens, mm -hmm. that wonderful yeah. series, mm -hmm. um, how they, they, they just kind of borrowed massive amounts of sets from Space 1999. And I was just mm -hmm. thinking, wouldn't it have been great if Doctor Who could have borrowed all the Moonbase Alpha sets? <laughs> I think they were in production at the same time. Yeah, I think they yeah. probably were 70. Are we going with the Vengeance? Or Ark in Space? You know, are we all happy with the Happy with either of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Harry, Sarah, Sarah which why not? Yeah. Because, because Sarah. One, yeah. as we know, in the Moonbase, one companion is superfluous anyway. Yeah, last minute, Jamie, oh. and that's why he falls over. Yeah, and goes, oh, my neeps and, and yeah, yeah. Things. Well, yeah, we can cut. We just cut him really. We don't. So we just cut Jamie yeah. completely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. After I realised that kind of you'd probably never get the Moonbase Alpha thing, I was thinking, yeah, no, it's going to be more like uh, Moonbase Three, isn't it? Yeah, the fancy more Moonbase Three yeah. sets. Well, it's Roger Murray Leach. He's a good designer. Yeah. You know, I still haven't got around to watching. Things. Moonbase three, I kind of, I've had, I've had sort of copies of it for ages, but I'm not. I find Moonbase three hard to get through. It is, mm. yeah, it's, it's hard interminable. Work. It's <laughs> very um, earnest. It's very earnest, and I think, I think the grotty NTSC just doesn't help. Mm. Do not have the feds put the effort in. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's grotty NTSC a lot of the way, but it's most of the time bloody good. Mm. Uh, you know, quite gritty and hard hitting, but Moonbase three it doesn't have meander. Yeah, it oh blimey, it meanders. <laughs> Maybe if if Barry Letts had still been in charge, maybe he'd have had a kind of Doctor Who Moonbase Three crossover, and maybe, actually had all maybe. the cast of Moonbase Three. In. Maybe well, maybe they've still got. I mean, maybe Barry Letts commissioned this anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, until they do some random uh, course and, and just start ramming producers into different eras and seeing what that would have been like. <laughs> <laughs> Which is actually a perfectly valid podcast idea in itself, although limited. Yeah. yeah, I read a production history of, of uh, Moonbase Three, and it makes a lot of sense when you find out that they w they wrote the last episode first. Uh, <laughs> right. They got a sort of gifted playwright to write this episode, and then they thought, right, well, we need another five episodes to lead into this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Interminable. Good. Well, now he's got any chance of a cup of tea. Okay. So um, yeah, we're looking at the Tom Baker story, the Mars base. Yeah. In space. In space. The Mars base in space, yeah. Excellent, Mars base in space. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the story as it stands starts with the TARDIS out of control, as it always mm -hmm. seems to be at, at that point. And they land, uh, well, funnily enough, they're aiming for Mars in the Tron version, and they end up on the moon. And Ben's Yeah, yeah. so, uh, hey, we've just got it right for them. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this will be nice, then. This will be that lovely Tom Baker, early Tom Baker console room. Yeah. Twice. Yeah. Mm. Um, we now see it three times. Yeah, yeah. And when Tom does TARDIS out of control, he really goes for it, doesn't it? None of oh, this kind of going all over the place. Yeah, yeah. None of this kind of slight swaying. He's like <laughs> no, in, it's in really pyramids out, of Mars. Right. He just really throws himself. It's really right absolutely misleading, and I'm sure Ian Marta will as well. So this will be a yeah. good start to it. Yeah. <laughs> Lights going on and off, and bits of the console exploding. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the second story. Great. I actually yeah. did that. I totally yeah. do. And uh, presumably Harry Sullivan's just there going, Bally! Uh, <laughs> he's going Bally, yeah. yeah. Gripping the TARDIS. He's uh, completely... Having learned from Ben's Amazing Her Majesty Punch, he's, he's uh, <laughs> trying the same sort of shit. <laughs> A rather more posh way. <laughs> yeah, I bet Harry's going to take some sad man out with Bally at some point today. I love the way that Harry, can, almost for all the time he's in it, he's not entirely convinced of anything, is he? Yeah. So he'd, yeah. he'd be on Mars and he'd be going, well, you, know, you see it's Mars. It might be Mars. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Quarry. Yeah. yeah. To which Tom will turn around at this point in his, in his Doctor Who and say something like, well, take your helmet off and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I always get the feeling that he really wants rid of Harry because Harry's getting yeah. in the way of him and Sarah. Mm. He's, he's yeah. a bit of a gooseberry, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they want to explore. This leads into quite a lengthy sequence, actually, in the original version, where they put on some spacesuits and they, they kind of bounce around for a while. Yeah, I think the spacesuits will look better. Mm. Yes. They probably won't be doing so much bouncing, particularly for Mars. They'll be kind of, you know. I think there'll be a bit less of it. And Harry yeah. would kind of do something stupid like bouncing off. He'd, he'd do the kind of well, bouncing he'd, off he'd, over a ridge. Bit, he'd, he'd, yeah, he's the one who knackers his ankle. <laughs> yes. And Sarah stands there going, ha! Your ankle, <laughs> not mine. <laughs> Whenever we see Mars in a science fiction thing, the, the gravity always seems to be fairly normal, doesn't it? It doesn't look particularly... Mm. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen anything where they try and make 
I don't know how, how much gravity Mars has got. Yeah, then. I don't. I wonder, I wonder if I wonder if this would be a quarry. I wonder if this would be a quarry tinted yeah, probably, red. It might be. Yeah, probably yeah, be a quarry tinted studios. red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, might look quite good. It'd be fun yeah. to see one bouncing around on a curvy wire on location. Yeah. <laughs> You'd have a scarf on the outside. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> So they find their way to a um, dome on the surface. It's quite a nice model of the moon base, I think, but mm. the scale is wrong of the yeah. way. inside. Yeah, and it's always annoyed me that. Yeah, yeah. got a direct reference to the set of the real of the full size gravitron. Yeah, and you could have done it; it wouldn't have been that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then later, you've yeah. got that perspective shot of the 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 Cyberman spaceship, which would be completely visible from the moon base. Totally <laughs> visible. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I worked it out once. You've got the model of the moon base, the cyber ship, and the three foot model of the TARDIS all within yeah. a triangle of each other on on the Ealing set. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a shame. Probably look quite good in this, so it'll probably still be done on film. You know, yeah. the distance like like when they see the Carled Dome, you know, and it's covered by mist and stuff like that. Probably oh, yeah, look yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they might have a couple of different areas, might they? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, Harry's obviously getting dragged inside. Um, mm-hmm. The doctor and Sarah pursue, and they yeah. enter this um this space. He's shouting unhand me. Who the doctor or Harry? <laughs> yeah, not the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> Bally. Bally. Give me tea. I need tea. <laughs> so inside the base, we get to meet a large number of crew. Uh, there's yeah. uh, there's lots of men falling ill, and mm-hmm. I do quite like the setup here. Actually, it's like got... nowadays. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I do quite like the setup where they got all these guys. Mm in the episodes and they're kind of it's meant to be the same crew mm, yeah. he's not too bad actually i think i suppose yeah. someone in episode four they hadn't been in the previous three episodes but it was kind right. of it's, it's all yeah. right yeah one of the cast members definitely disappears between episodes three and four mm-hmm. yeah but it's it's quite a good go it's quite a big cast in this one it's, it's quite big I mean, most of them are extras, but, the base. yeah but they've all got names they've all got their sort of number badges yeah on. they've all got names they've all got functions you can believe in them yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah the, the gravitron gang uh yeah. are kind of you know right one of the better bases to be under siege mm. so yeah the leaders hobson played by patrick Helen Barr, in the original version oh Helen Mirren. yes why not yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that was easy yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm always ready for a bit of Mirren, you know that yeah well yeah yeah you know and then the second in command is uh, a frenchman benoit Helene Mirren. <laughs> Helene Mirren. <laughs> Okay. Uh, <laughs> and then... Uh, you can't just allow that. She's clearly fictional. <laughs> she might not be. I mean, there might be a French actress called Ellie Mirren. I'm just saying if all of these casts look the same, it's going to be quite confusing. You know? It's going to be a lot of Helen Mirren, yeah. 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 You know, the side men walk in and go, yeah, you're a bit scary and just walk out again. <laughs> you're a bit samey. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a kind of BBC... French actor from the seventies, and I can't think of one at all. No, apart from Andre mm. Morin. Yeah. Mm. Um, well, it Unless it be... wasn't actually a French person, it just could be Gordon K. Yeah. Do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am French. <laughs> you stupid woman. <laughs> well, actually, not Gordon K. We we have we have General Raven in the same season. Yeah, yeah. Guy Steiner. So why not Gordon K. doing his French <laughs> accent early? <laughs> Helen Mirren and Gordon, Helen Mirren and Rene, <laughs> and the Cybermen. <laughs> There's more because on the comms we've got the Mad Dane Nils. Oh, yeah. Who's Danish? Sandy Toxvik. No, she wasn't Sandy around. Sandy <laughs> She's, She's probably very young. Around. Then. Very young. That's all right. Very young. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. <laughs> I'm down with Sandy Toxvik, as it were. Yeah. And then uh, number four is the Doctor Evans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who isn't here much? Um, no, somebody Welsh. Yeah, Gareth yeah. Thomas. Gareth Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> He's practically an extra. I mean, he yeah. collapses. He collapses sort of almost immediately, and we see veins kind of stretching all over his face. Yeah. He comes back, man. He does come back, but yeah, you know, he doesn't get much dialogue. Peter Miles. Miles. Yes. That would be sinister. Yeah. 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 Mm. God, imagine him as your doctor. That'd be terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very sorry to tell you, you have a mild sprain to the ankle. <laughs> it hurts, Doctor. Thank you. That's what I wanted to know. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> she prompts you again and smiles very slightly. Yeah. You're probably mental. going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. 
it's about 2070. Um, they're in the middle of an emergency, but Hobson is surprisingly friendly and welcome him, and he kind of shows them yeah. around a little bit. He doesn't take much convincing, does he? No, he's kind of, oh, all right, yeah, you turn it up, yeah. I right. feel that Helen might take a little bit more convincing. Maybe, maybe. She might yeah, be a bit more... buy it so easily. Oh, God, yes, she might be a bit more Adelaide from, you know, Waters of Mars. Should be, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I read this the other day, right, Waters of Mars, mm -hmm. the commander, Adelaide, mm -hmm. who's yeah. originally going to be cast? Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's who they had in mind. Why wasn't she supposed to say no? It's because they were going to have, she was going to be Russian. Right. Oh, yes. Helen Mirren's Russian. Um, and then uh, they decided that was a bit too similar to something else, where there's a Russian commander. Um, I don't know, 2010 or something. I don't know. But uh, yeah, yeah so they she's, changed a, it. she's a Russian cosmonaut in 2010. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So uh, they changed it, made a British, and cast um, Leslie. Yeah. Leslie, what's her name? Yeah. Leslie GBH, I always say. Leslie GBH, yes. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, where'd you keep your Jorex? What? Where do you keep your Jorex? In your wallet. No, the Jorex for the machine. In the machine. It's empty. Jorex, the biggest exterminator of them all. Exterminate, exterminate, exterminate. Ow! So that's my second factoid of tonight. I'm out of factoids now. So Excellent. Oh, that's good. That's good. Factoid. Factoid. That's why I'm thinking of one. We mm. should have a factoid like jingle for factoid. Yes, we should have a factoid, factoid. jingle. Factoid. The protons, this is a factoid. <laughs> <laughs> this is that the... is not a factoid. <laughs> <laughs> You are not a fat guy. <laughs> the the hall. <laughs> The other thing I was going to say was, obviously, uh, we've also used the Gravitron in Sleep No More as well. So maybe this is something else. It's which... a Gravitron. I don't know. Gravitron. If you... you wouldn't put a Gravitron on Mars anyway, would you? You'd have something else. It'd be like no, something... you wouldn't. You'd have something else on Mars. You'd have, you'd yeah. have um, uh, asteroid going? deflector. Asteroid yeah. deflector or a terraforming thing or something, I don't know, yeah. Asteroid or... deflector makes sense because the side, because later we can use that. Okay, asteroid yeah. deflector. It's an asteroid good. heading yeah, towards yeah. the Earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind yeah. of ties it big, and it's gold, ties it vaguely with Revenge of the Slab. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's to protect oh. their base from asteroids. Yeah. But they can also use it to fling asteroids out into the... Fling asteroids. Fling yeah. asteroids, yeah. 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 Asteroid flinging. It's a sport. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Mm. So, the asteroid flinger. Is it a phantom asteroid flinger? Of old London town. <laughs> no, no, I was thinking of the Phantom Flan Flinger from Tiswas. That was our ah, TV. Mm. Uh, Mind yeah, you, I never watched I it. I watched Watch Shop. Mm. It might I'm sure one. ITV, um, Tiny Tees were one of the last regions to uh, bring Tiswas on board. Is that also the reason, right? Yeah, because I remember going on holiday somewhere and seeing it and thinking, I've never seen this before. Huh. I'd seen it yeah. in like, Looking, I've seen it mentioned in Looking and things yeah, like that, yeah. but I'd never looking. seen it. Oh, that's posh. Uh, well, <laughs> on and off, depending on what was on the cover, you know. Yeah. I only ever got Radio Times, so you know that was. Uh, of course, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we understand. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and Punch, we used to get Punch as well. Do you remember Punch? Fuck me, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, <laughs> dude. <laughs> <laughs> we're sitting there smoking our pipes yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Punch, listen, yeah. listen to a bit of Bach yes <laughs> passing around with a few of punch and having a, a sensible chuckle about it yes, yes this new comedic illustration is really quite ribald <laughs> disgusting habit uh, Hobson's quite friendly but they're in a bit of a situation three of the men they're all men in the original version men the men are ill and they realise that their radio is being monitored. Mm -hmm. In fact, we do get some scenes in the cyber source. I don't know, it's sort of nearby. It's, it's definitely yeah. kind of tuning in. Yeah. Hey, in our version, if we've got Gordon Kay in it, what about if like every other member of the crew is female? And he, <laughs> he just keeps coming back in looking slightly dishevelled. <laughs> Adjusting his shirt. That's right. If Gordon Kay's in it, you're going to keep finding him in, in bed with one of the crew members. Yeah. <laughs> it's going... Don't be silly, Actor. isn't it obvious what I'm doing? <laughs> no. <laughs> you stupid controller, Rindberg. 
<laughs> That's an episode title. <laughs> Base commander should be Carmen Silvera. That's what we need. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not replacing Helen Mirren with Carmen Silvera, all right? They're very, <laughs> very similar. <laughs> I should have stuck with Ali Mirren with them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we should apologise to our American listeners that bits of this podcast do require an understanding of uh, Allo Allo. Allo Allo, yeah. yes. Um, 80s sitcom set in France during World War II uh, with yeah. a lot of British actors all putting on ridiculous accents. Hilarious. Tend to be <laughs> French or German or Italian. Or British, in fairness. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, the British guys. Yeah. 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 Ridiculous. Yeah. 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 I tell you what's interesting is that uh, I watched all of Allo Allo through in a box set a, a while ago. Wow. Yeah. And there's like... That's um, dedication, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> and there's there's like one season of it, which is stupidly long. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's about a third of the entire run of the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I was 1990. Reading, yeah, I was reading... The reason for that was they were trying to launch it in America. Yeah. They had a like okay. co-production deal with an American network. And, that, and it's an American length series so it's like right. 22 episodes yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. whereas the bbc had been making series that were like six yeah. <laughs> so it suddenly yeah. has this enormous season in the middle huh. yeah i remember that happening at the time um yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it'd been a bit weird that's also kind of the point where the quality kind of really goes off the edge of a cliff though isn't yeah. it yeah yeah. <laughs> it's a red dwarf, yeah 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 anywho anywho yeah. okay so yes anywho uh, we're gonna call it that anywho any who will do. <laughs> <Damn. Yeah>. um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they go to the medical bay uh, where um, Harry's recovering. Mm-hmm. And Get away from Peter Miles, please. He's freaking me out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just take the bed over there instead. I guess Harry's going to immediately have to take over as the base doctor. He's going to have to do a uh, poly. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And then that leaves Sarah doing Ben's stuff. So, presumably sarah this works brilliantly yeah sarah yeah. gets sent to help out ralph in the food store yeah wow yeah ralph I uh, need somebody. <laughs> very spooky scene in the food store dark yeah. shadows yeah. Five men lurking it's uh, annoying that we haven't got episode one isn't it episode one looks yeah. great yeah it looks uh, great it really does look, yeah. yeah episodes one and three are the best right, episodes i think yeah we, we, yeah yeah although as we were all seeing when we watched it although Oh, you didn't watch the animation, did you, Baz? But as, as I did, the, I watched the animation. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you did. Was it yeah. you that didn't watch the animation, Ru? Well, I was going to watch the telly snaps to make a contrast, but I ended up watching the animation because I hadn't seen. All oh, right, it. yeah, and it's I, like, I like, the like I was like. saying though, it's the, the animation on that episode, those two episodes, is really good. I think it's yeah. one of yeah. one of the it's best. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. The thing that astonished me is they turn up in the right costumes for Underwater Menace, which you just you can't yeah. imagine them bothering with these days. Yeah, yeah indeed. Yeah. It means you've yeah. had to animate all these characters in different costumes for like one scene, and yeah. I'm, I'm astonished that they even did it. And my yeah. take is very astonished. much for the animations to stick as close as possible to what we know they looked like because we've got yeah. them yeah. all photos. You know, if they're, I'm all, I, I get the argument about reimagining things, but this is recreating a thing. Mm. Yeah, and you've also got a very sixty soundscape. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I found sometimes the updated. I, I thought Macro Terror was brilliantly animated, but the fact that it looked nothing like the Macro Terror really annoyed me. Mm. Yeah. Because it sounded like the Macro Terror. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think to take it out of that, I, I find it jarring. Yeah. yeah. And also, they were just bloody crabs. Yeah. Why is it? Why is it in the, in the two pieces of the, the two depictions of the Macro since the Macro Terror, the one we can't look at, to be yeah. bloody crabs? We'd look like crabs. Yeah. <laughs> they're animation crabs they weren't crabs they have crab claws but they're not very crab like are they yeah. they're really crabby I tell you the worst one for me is, <laughs> the worst one is um, the faceless ones mm. Um, mm. where they've, they've got one policeman they haven't animated yeah. any more policemen so <laughs> even when the scenes where there's like two or three policemen in them it's all the same bloke yeah, and over the course of six episodes, it starts to become really creepier. This fucking <laughs> same policeman keeps turning up in that, in that particular Close. story as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's really disturbing. And you think, why? Well, I mean, all right, they've got short man time and budget, but seriously, yeah, just make one that. more fucking yeah. policeman. Yeah, yeah give one of them a beard at least. Yeah, just, yeah. Just don't put the effort into animating episodes one and three. Yeah, and bury <laughs> your policeman. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> bury your policeman. 
<laughs> Stop. <laughs> you keep Same. using the same policeman? You must be out of your tiny mind. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, where was I? Um, <laughs> Sarah, uh, spooky scene, spooky scene, yes. Ralph. spooky scene, the food store. Yes, Sarah's trying to help yes. out Ralph. Um, he's got sort of whipped bags of sugar, and he's he's kind of struggling a bit. And then he gets zapped. It's a Cyberman drags him away. But we don't see the whole thing, do we? We just see like his hand going zap. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's difficult it's to tell. We've got the photo yeah. of it going zap, but I think uh... yeah. Yeah, it'd be nice to see the actual scene. Hopefully, it was really shadowy and you couldn't see much at all. You know, it um, looks it. It looks it. It looks yeah. you know. Nice direct. I mean, um, Morris Barry could do quite atmospheric stuff. Too was atmospheric, mm. and he's got good uses of lighting in that as well. It was the old pro, wasn't he, Morris Barry? Yeah. Mm. Who knows what happened with the Dominators? <laughs> I don't think anybody was really very interested. <laughs> no, no, probably not. I'm not very interested when I watch the Dominators. <laughs> <laughs> the Dominators. <laughs> yeah, I do too. It's no crotons, but you know. It's no crotons. I like the sensor rights as well. I'll <laughs> fight anyone who doesn't. Oh, no, I struggle with Indeed. the sensor rights. Yeah, that's like. And we must fight. <laughs> it's like four episodes too long. You've um, got to watch the sensor rights one episode a week or something. Because if you try and watch seven episodes of it in one go, that's just death. Uh, I can do it in one go, me. <laughs> oh, you're hard. I am. Nails. The first time I saw it, I genuinely fell asleep whilst watching it. <laughs> I think the bit that gets me is where they can't tell the difference between each other, except if they've got yeah. the right sash on. And like, what the oh, fuck? Yes, that's ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous in that way. But still, I don't know. I like it. <laughs> I'm just a pussy for every single black and white story. To be honest, I love all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very yeah. meandering episode. Of this isn't. It? We're getting a little bit distracted. Um, we're getting quite near the end of episode one, I guess. Mm. In the medical bay, Evans dies. Oh, oh good gone. Yeah. Move on. He's gone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank you. And the doctor goes to get Hobson uh, to let her know. And then it's kind of during this process that Evans disappears. Mm-hmm. And uh, basically there's a Cyberman coming in and grabbing him, grabbing bodies. Quite macabre, really, isn't it? It's quite macabre. Yeah. It's different body snatching. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's quite, quite Burke and Hare. Hinchcliffe will be going for this. Mm. Yeah. They probably yeah they probably do it really atmospherically wouldn't they yeah It'd be quite scary yeah yeah actually we're keeping the Ark in space director are we Rodney Bennett Rodney Bennett yeah yeah I think does a good job of that yeah it's quite brightly lit but I suppose yeah he... yeah it would be wouldn't it yeah are they going to be um, the revenge style Cybermen oh they're bound to be yeah, be a, but there's been. cyber bombs they've got yeah. cyber bombs yeah oh yeah is it going to be yeah. Christopher Robbie mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look on the bright side, making Ark in Space, we have got Dudley Simpson rather than uh, Carrie Blyton. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. I like Carrie Blyton. I, it's just in small weird. doses, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, this is Helen Mirren as Hobson. is not, not at all happy that her crew is disappearing. Yeah. So um, uh, the Doctor's searching for Evans, and it's around this point that uh, Harry goes to get some water and then comes back in and sees a Cyberman. Yeah. Having it away with another body. Not having it well. Yeah, nicking off with another body. <laughs> Initiative isn't going to be going that far. <laughs> no, not again. Um, <laughs> yeah, keep it. How he goes back in and sees the Cyberman nicking a body, yeah, feeling it, and uh, he goes the Phantom Paper. Oh, oh, and that's the end of the episode. Tom goes, "Why the fuck have you gone Scottish?" <laughs> <laughs> An extremely high pitch. <laughs> So, yeah, we get the reveal of the Cyberman and, and uh, mm. yeah, it's a nice episode. Episode one, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It? Yeah. It sets yeah. things up nicely. It's very neat. Um, yeah. As, as you said earlier, the crew are very believable and you just go, you're straight in mm-hmm. with the, you know, no, no time is wasted. I think a bit too little time is wasted mm-hmm. uh, on, on them being accepted. But uh, though that carries on into episode two. In fairness, you know, Hobson does go, start getting grumpy. Hobson and going, starts right? getting increasingly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Look, who the hell are you people? Are you ready to travel through time with us? Then check out Traveling the Vortex, a Doctor Who podcast. 
For nearly seven years and more than 500 episodes, we've traveled from one end of the vortex to the other, making different stops with different doctors, reviewing everything from TV stories to audio plays, from books to comics, and more. Sean, Keith, and Glenn take you on a journey through 50-plus years of Doctor Who episodes and spinoff materials. You can find us wherever you get your podcasts, so be sure to check us out. And now, we're a proud member of Direction Point, a Doctor Who podcast network. You're listening to Time Ran, a Direction Point podcast. So, Harry comes in and screams. Yeah. Everyone rushes in. He's a bit of a screamer, apparently. And he might um, yelp. He might yelp. He might go, Buddy! You might go, Buddy. Yeah. yeah. Just very loudly. Yeah. yeah. Buddy! <laughs> <laughs> That's quite the scene. <laughs> indeed. indeed. Uh, Hobson's basically, she, she's not into it. She says, It's not Cybermen. Don't be stupid. Mm-hmm. We haven't seen the Cybermen since that other incident with the Cybermen in that other We'll come to that <laughs> one day. <laughs> well, I haven't seen the Cybermen for years. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. I thought she was Russian. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Russian stroke Geordie. Yeah. <laughs> She's had enough at this point. Geordie on another side. She's given them 24 hours to find what's going on. Yeah. God, she'll be incomprehensible if she's half Russian and half Geordie. Fuck me. <laughs> Who's done a chance? I don't know what that would sound like. I don't... <laughs> no, I'm not even going to try and do it. I'll just defend people. <laughs> Which people? Me, most Russian Geordie people. Yeah, Russian Geordie people, people yeah. obviously. Well, so, uh, clearly, you can offend, offend oh, at the moment. No, nobody minds about offending Russians. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Geordie's might get a bit raggy, though. Yeah. Geordie's might get a bit raggy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Fucking knock you. Tavarish. <laughs> you see, it was something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Away, comrade. <laughs> <laughs> Have some vodka. Do the tune. Yeah, let's, let's, let's not go any further. Then. Okay, I can't <laughs> stop now. I can't read for those actions. <laughs> I'm just digging myself in deeper. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word! Okay, so uh, yeah, there's quite a lot of technical stuff goes on in episode two uh, mm. when they talk about their big asteroid deflector. Yeah, we'll yeah. set up some danger here. Yeah, 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 yeah. The doctor's been sort of being moody around it for a bit, going hmm, mm. um, but now it's sort of laid out exactly what this does, and that there's always ever present danger from asteroids yeah. that might strike the Earth, man. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And the most yeah. important thing is, if you're operating it, you have to wear a swimming cap. Yes. Yeah, you have to wear a swimming cap because yeah. otherwise it'll knock your heat. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So to say, yeah, we get quite a lot of information about it. Yeah, so um, we can tell what Kit Pedal was into. Kit Pedal is having a good day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Davis is just sort of pacing up and down, smoking a flag, being a bit languid. Go, no, you carry on, Kit. <laughs> yeah. Do what you want. Yeah. 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 Um, Two or three pages. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the doctor's got some nice comedy stuff here. He's kind of taking samples of various people, mm-hmm. and making their boots, trying to find the source of this disease that's put in danger. Won't be dissimilar. It won't be dissimilar with Tom Willie because he's very much the the the, the anarchist as his Troughton. Yeah, they're quite uh, similar they're, in some ways. Yeah, yeah. Being disruptive. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. The bit where Troughton grabs someone's boot and yeah, it's Rene, isn't it? Rene will walk off without his boot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, is it a law? <laughs> it's a law. Yes, you stupid doctor. Stupid the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> doctor. <laughs> and, yeah, and Thomas, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've got another crew member called Sam, um, Sam Beckett, I think. Sam Beckett, Sam Beckett, apparently. Yeah, Excellent. uh, he's, he's played by a really young Scott Bakula. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he, he's, he's come through time. Nice, he again. Oh boy, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you're gonna say that when you see a Cyberman or Holy Flaming Cow, one of the two, or Bally. <laughs> <laughs> and he's the one that spotted that uh, there's uh, little pressure drops yeah. and uh, it's kind of established that it's the Cybermen coming in the base uh, they've got a little hole somewhere like mice right. yeah. I love the simplicity of that mm. it's a drill hole yeah. yeah I mean it's kind of some bags of rice are not going to stop the air escaping that's the only thing <laughs> it's kind of, I've know, always assumed there's some, assume some the kind hole. of cyber membrane beyond, beyond the bags of rice yeah, yeah, yeah. in the hole somewhere if you drill the hole into a vacuum or a near vacuum, it's, it's yeah, you know, your air's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cyber membrane. 
Yeah, yeah. Cyber membrane. Cyber membrane. Mm. Like they have, yeah, they've got membranes in two of the side, haven't they? They're good at membranes. Yeah. Mm. Self repairing membranes, yeah. Self repairing cyber membrane. Mm-hmm. Self repairing cyber membrane. <laughs> Hobson uh, realizes that the control antennae are damaged. Yes. So uh, he sends um, Jules and France. I'm yeah. trying to name these crew members. Jules and France go out to, to repair it. This is Rene, right? Uh, no, Rene is Benoit. So, oh, Rene's Benoit, of course he is. Yeah. Jules and France are two more guys. France, France I think, right. maybe German. Jules, right. I can't quite remember. Right. But, I mean, they're, they're, I'm not sure they really get much in the way of dialogue. They're just, they're just, I don't think they're not going to get very far, are they, no? No. I mean, in the 70s, I guess maybe, in the Tom Baker era, at least more of the crew might be women. Um, yeah. yeah. It's very male-dominated, this story, isn't it? More of them might be black as well. Ralph's black. Yeah. Yeah, but it's only Ralph. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And he was uh, laudable for the time. Yeah. yeah. We're trying. Yeah, I mean, Joey Day is probably have... going, okay, we the cast black people. Bill's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Joey Davis doesn't have a great reputation in this area, but I mean, he's, kind of, he's making a bit of an effort here. Um, yeah. And as I think we mentioned once before, you've got an actual Frenchman playing the Frenchman. Yeah. True, true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But not Except in our we... version. Except now we haven't. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> inferior in that way, but, uh, <laughs> but it's still lovely yeah. casting. <laughs> Okay, doing his convincing accent. <laughs> Absolutely good. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, the doctor, basically Hobson's at the point now. I think it must have been 24 hours. Hobson's at the point where he's kind of saying, or she's kind of saying, rather, yeah. right, sling your work, get out. Yeah, yeah. Um, get out. Get yeah. out of my dome. Or in Russian. It's a great Helen Mirren impersonation. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> Geordie <laughs> Russian Helen Mirren impersonation. <laughs> get out of my dome. <laughs> <laughs> you bugger. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> um, so the doctor, yeah, to... pet. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it would be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the doctor has to pretend to make a breakthrough mm-hmm. and kind of convince her that uh, that he's making some progress. Uh, which is a bit interesting scene with Tom Baker, isn't it? I mean, again, I yeah, I don't think yeah. it has changed much here at all in yeah. terms of what the doctor does and what says and motivation. It would be, you know, yeah. Delivered differently, obviously. Yeah, I mean, Tom is generally a bit more dominating than Trown. Trown's kind of very yeah. much kind of going, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. And Mr. Richards, Tom is like imperious. He'd, he'd, he'd be louder about it and kind of go, look, I can't work with all these people around. Go on, fuck off. Yes. Words to that effect. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then say to Sarah, I haven't a clue. And grin. <laughs> um, <laughs> and begin to cement his popularity. Yeah. And she uh, says, no, you never fucking know the answer when it's important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, Elizabeth Sladen's not getting a lot to do. She will in episode three, of course, but uh, yeah, at the moment it's a surprisingly passive role for Sarah. Yeah, yeah. we've kind of given a bit of Ben's role. Um, ben actually isn't in it a huge amount. I mean, it's, it's yeah. not surprising they combined Jamie yeah, to yeah, Ben no, for a while. Funny enough, it actually mirrors the arc in space because she spends a chunk of you know episode two unconscious, a chunk yeah. of episode one becoming unconscious, and then in episode three has the bit where she has to crawl through the the um, the, the Sarah crawl tube. The Sarah crawl tube. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's what it's called in the schematic. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah to you. Well, this is, of course, the point where Polly starts making huge amounts of coffee. She um, does. Yes. Is is Harry doing that or is Sarah doing that? Let's get Harry doing it. They're doing yeah. it together. Yeah. Because Harry's only a doctor that they really need with people going down with this virus. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe he's a bit ludicrous in the head because he's on, been on interferon or something. Yeah. Hmm. Interferon's a thing, you know. I was reading about interferon recently. I didn't know that. That's a real thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 I forget what it does, but it, it, it's a thing. It interferes. Good stuff. I don't know if it interferes. I'm I'm not medical. Yes, from the Latin, I would say it interferes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what story is it where they talk about giving somebody prophylactic drugs? And as a kid, you're just going to go, prophylactic. <laughs> <laughs> That's... Doctor Who and the Silurians. Yes. <laughs> Actually, because I always think about it as well. And Pertwee's really very authoritative about it too. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, Pertwee, I'll keep from that signal. Oh, please be quiet. So we get this coffee scene. It's, it's intercut uh, with Jules and France outside the base. Uh, they're getting fucked up by Cybermen. Mm-hmm. And then everyone comes in for coffee. Basically, this is a big coffee scene. This is this yeah. 
We, big, we, big yeah, round yeah, table, yeah, yeah, triangular yeah, table, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. There's no table, um, is there? No, there's no table. There's just no, there's no table. Big no yeah. table. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they got these nice little things with sugar in, oh, quite big things, really. Um, yeah. And then Hobson's about to put some sugar in her tea, and the doctor smacks it out of the hand. Yeah. Realize it's in the sugar. And uh, it's uh, talking jargon. It's a large neurotropic virus. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Yeah. And then they realize that there's Cybermen hiding in the medical center. Yeah. And then we get that atrocious scene where he gets off the bed and the bed goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we just had someone holding it. That's all I needed. It was the outer shot. Yeah. Just someone going. Yeah. 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 Nice it thing. probably didn't happen all the run throughs. No, it's probably fine. It's in, they nicely keep in the animation as well. Yeah. Yeah. Even in the animation, you're still on yeah. the bed going, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want from my animations. <laughs> I want accuracy. <laughs> I want wobblesome moments. Yeah. <laughs> they probably restaged it for episode three. So it probably didn't even wobble in episode three. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they did or whether it was a, a play. Mm. Yeah. If we actually did research. <laughs> <laughs> That's some factoids. Come on. Yeah. Factoid. Oh, yeah. The Cybermen were built by Jack and John Lovell. Ah. Yeah. Not Shawcraft. Oh, okay. Everyone thinks they're Shawcraft, but they were not. Jack and John Lovell would go on to build the Ice Warriors and had built the Rills. Ah. Shawcraft built the Mark I Cybermen. <laughs> and the Donald Pleasants. And the Donald Pleasants. <laughs> they did build Donald Pleasants, and, and yeah. Inner Story was not happy about the cost. <laughs> and the Macra. <laughs> and the Macra, they built the Macra. Macra. Yeah. Which yeah, were yeah, not yeah. crabs. Yeah, yeah, not crabs, no, and the Daleks actually. They built the Daleks. Well, obviously the Daleks. We have, we know they built the Daleks. Oh, they yeah. also weren't crabs. We know they built Kubla Khan, Marco Polo. He wasn't a crab. <laughs> he was not a crab. No, <laughs> yeah, crab. You are not a crab. <laughs> this is meandering. <laughs> Won't be jiffy. Absence makes the nose grow longer. We're quite launching into episode three here. The side yes. they basically they take over. It doesn't take long. No. They killed Bob. Bob's had it. Um, oh, Bob. 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 Who's playing Bob? Uh, I don't think we've cast Bob. Have we not cast Bob? No, it's, cast... The, it's the guy with the glasses in the in the, in the episode two. Yeah. Um, um, to be a, a stuntman. Be Terry Walsh. Terry Walsh. <laughs> Terry Walsh, yeah. 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 Or Yoffy, randomly. <laughs> <laughs> Yoffy. Yoffy. From Finger Bobs. From Finger Bobs. How BBC? Oh, uh, okay. I don't remember Finger Bobs. I don't know. I oh, that. for fuck's sake. Yeah. He's <laughs> eating punch. He just passed away recently, didn't he, Yoffy? He did, he did, yeah. Oh, yeah. sad. There's an interesting scene here, actually, where the Cybermen immediately recognise the Doctor. They kind of yeah. go, I know him to us. You know, you know, it, it's, it's the first Trout appearance with them. So it's kind of... It's clearly a great bit of prefiguring for the invasion, which explains perfectly well why the Cybermen know that incarnation of the Doctor. Mm. <laughs> but at the time, it is, yeah, I was thinking that today, I was thinking, well, how, you know, and why isn't Ben going, how the fuck do they know what he looks like? Because yeah. he looks like William Arnold. Changed his face, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, so it's an odd one, that. Yeah. Or well, maybe it was, maybe it was kind of earlier, maybe it was a hangover from the whole Power of the Daleks thing, where it takes a Dalek to go... Uh, but the doctor, the doctor. Go, yeah. Oh well, he must be the doctor then. Okay, if a Dalek's doing it, the Daleks do it, and yeah. the Cybermen do it. They all do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or the Cybermen see on some weird spectrum where they see his aura rather see than his, aura. his face. Aura. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's they see his reader aura. <laughs> they they realise that he's the timeless child. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God no. <laughs> <laughs> Please, no. Child. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, obviously they won't have met Tom's doctor before with this being a second story. So again, yeah. how the hell do you know? Yeah. Do we have a cyberscope moment? Maybe, yeah. Uh, what from Earth? Really what time actually? Because because this episode's quite again quite well paced. It's yeah. quite well paced this one actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not slow. No. Yeah. I mean, there's a scene in the cyber ship where we see France and Jules being converted, and they put these mm. weird helmets on their heads. Oh. This is a factoid. Hey, factoid. <laughs> they came from an episode of Out, Out of the Unknown, Time in Advance. Ah, okay. Which I think was made, which was made previously, 1965, uh -huh. so it must have been originated there, or before then. Uh, and yeah, they're worn at the very beginning as kind of like decompression helmets. Right, because uh, that one exists, uh -huh. doesn't it? Yeah. I'll have to watch the episode again. is available on DVD, so if you have oh, a copy, yes. look at Time in Advance and you'll be able to see those weird helmets from the moon base in action. Mm. Yes. Yeah. That was a factoid. <laughs> <laughs> Bad boy, over. I'm exhausted. 
<laughs> but it's quite a, it's quite a little scene, isn't it? It's quite a brief scene. I mean, uh, you only see mm. those helmets, I think, in maybe a few shots, and then yeah. um, it's, it's really quick, and then they move on. That's why they think they're about the unknown rather than getting shot. Right, some new ones. Yeah, why would you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, their suits. I don't know quite how they got them in the cyber saucer because their suits have been left on the moon's surface. They're still there. Yeah. Put them in better suits. Yeah, Fuck knows really why fast. they were getting them from one to the other. The membranes? <laughs> they put them in membranes. 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 Cyber membranes. Cyber membranes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it all makes there sense. We go. Yeah. Job. Um, so why yeah. you'd take their suits off at all? I mean, it's a pointless waste of time to yeah. take their suits off, put them in a cyber membrane. Yeah. Just take them back in their fucking suits. Yeah. And put another. Yeah. Clever, <laughs> clever, clever, my ass. <laughs> that was a good plan, Steve. That. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a good plan. So the Cybermen take over the control center and they're going to use the asteroid bouncer to fire. Yeah. Fling us some asteroids. Fire asteroids at the Earth. At the Earth. Yes. Yeah. They've kind of explained their plan a little bit. They burrowed in through the food store. We talk about membranes as well, just to make it clear. We talk about yes. membranes, yeah. Tom goes, ah, membranes. Ah. Yes. Oh, dear. We are in trouble, aren't we? Maybe someone found a bit of membrane in episode one. And it's kind of like, ah, you see, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite a lengthy scene, I suppose. But, yeah, they're kind of, uh, they're trying to contact Rinberg, I think, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's quite a lot goes on. Well, Rinberg contacts them, doesn't he? And, and and I love what Hobson comes up with. Oh, well, you know, if we don't answer, they'll just think we're all dead. Yes. <laughs> and the side men just go, oh, all right. Seems legit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, come on, guys. That's, that, that's a bit lame. <laughs> Wouldn't have got this if we cast Helene. Back in the medical centre, I guess Harry or... Se- no, probably Sarah. Let's say Sarah's making cocktail. Sarah cocktails mm-hmm. with acetate. Yeah. Acetone. Mm-hmm. Acetone. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is where Sarah gets to do her, her bit. Yeah, she does a bit. What are their little squirty bottles made out of? That plastic, doesn't yeah, dissolve. Yeah, plastic. Made plastic. <laughs> yeah, clearly plastic. Yeah, they're yeah, totally made of plastic. <laughs> it's silly. They've just got some <laughs> ceramic squirty bottles lying around. I mean, the place. I mean, if it was me, I'd at least have sprayed them silver and gone, oh, they're metal, really. Yeah. <laughs> pretended. You know, yeah. Written metal on it. <laughs> solid. It is a metal bottle. Heavy solid. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I've seen it. I've written Ben Goes Caveman. Oh, yes, he does. He does a bit. Yeah, does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with Jamie. He's not, he's not very... Harry, Harry, presumably here, just, just has a quick bally off in a corner with himself. <laughs> <laughs> bally, bally, bally. And, and, and then comes back, you know, having having won the bally himself by the <laughs> contest, um, thus proving himself to be schizophrenic. <laughs> and we also have the, the converted guys come back in. Uh, this could be quite creepy, particularly mm. like a... Era episode mm-hmm. where they, they kind of they got their little helmets on. You see, this is why we thank God it wasn't Kerry Blyton. Because mm. <laughs> it would be boom 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 terrifying zombified yeah. people with these you know yeah. animated yeah. corpses with veins on their faces coming yeah. in in membranes. And so I mean, they've got this kind of big sonic box thing that they control them with, haven't they? Um Factoid! This is the <laughs> from the tenth planet. Hey! <laughs> Yay! That's my turn. End of factoid. End of factoid. You will Return be to your business. <laughs> <laughs> They're using these guys to fire asteroids. They don't really want to do it themselves. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Harry and Sarah burst in with their spray cans. Yeah, spray cans. Yeah. Spray cans. 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 Yeah. 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 Yes. And they spray them to death. And they uh, they take control. And they melt like. They do. They melt. Yeah. 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 And 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 they appear to lose all their mass completely. They're left with the suit and the helmet and the chest unit and the shoes. Yeah, it literally melts what, the entire inside. What the fuck is a Cyberman then? <laughs> you know, in what kind of state of suspension is the? Is it just like human jelly left? <laughs> <laughs> Terrifying. It's pretty unpleasant, isn't it? Yeah. 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 What do the Cybermen do to you if that's what happens to you when your chest unit's clobbered? It just foam out of your chest, yeah. You foam yeah. out of your chest, but it's, it's not so much the foaming out of the chest. I don't mind that. We all do that from time to time. But <laughs> it, it, it's they're just completely disintegrating. They do it in the tenth planet as well. They're just suits left. Yeah. What is yeah. the form anyway? It's, it's jizz. Oh no! <laughs> Why do we we? <laughs> it's 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 guitar. <laughs> I think that's the second time White Wee Wee's got to mention in this program in the last few weeks. Well, yes, this is yes. the second time that White Wee Wee's come up. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> just seem to come up quite often. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> anyway. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> this is quite an odd little scene here. Uh, Benoit, Gordon Cade, decides to go out to look for Branson Jules. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't make a lot of sense because we've just, haven't we just seen them come in the control room with veins on their faces? Yes. Yes. <sighs> Uh, yes, but I, I kind of played it back. No, that's that's exactly what he thought. I thought maybe he'd be going to fix the aerial. No, no. He's Unless something guys. we don't see is is that they brought Franz and Jules in, and and your partner's like three others who are putting the hats on who are ready to go over. It yeah, thing. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah, the animation seems accurate. I don't know. Yeah, well, it could be it. There aren't any telly snaps that really. I think it's about two telly snaps to cover that scene or something, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Just to the camera script would tell us. Possibly just a mistake. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So Rene, is, he's getting all flustered. This is Rene. He's getting flustered. He goes outside and he gets chased by Cyberman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's kind of flapping and you know running. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> <laughs> the reason for all this is very simple, if a bit unlikely. So yeah, I guess Harry probably Harry has to go out and save him. Well, would it be Harry? Would it be Sarah? Because because Harry's probably still a bit dodgy on his ankle. Possibly the doctor, because the Tom's doctor is a bit more sort of obviously heroic than. Uh, yeah, the doctor yeah. might go and do yeah. it. Actually, he might yeah. do it himself. Yeah, yeah. yeah just grab but, it and run. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's sort of you know, expect attention for a while. Gets yeah. us to the end of the episode. Um, mm-hmm. At which point, Niels spots the Cyberman saucer. Yeah. And loads of Cybermen come out, and they're kind of advancing. Yeah. Yeah, quite slowly on the dome. I'm hoping this is going to be a nice glass shot that is in the quarry. Yeah, cyber ship, mm-hmm. perfectly doable. Then and all the Cybermen traipsing out. Although, of course, in Revenge of the Cybermen, there were four. <laughs> they had ten in the moon base. It's amazing how many Cybermen are in the moon base. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. incredible. When you see all those shots of them on the in the publicity shots on the mm-hmm. comic, yeah, ten yeah. of the fuckers, or is it eleven yes. or something? Yeah, they're sort of wandering around crazy. eating, aren't yeah. they? Just uh, loads and, and loads. And we yeah. really got four in Revenge of the Cybermen. Yeah. Mm. Very much got four. They would need um, effects, yeah. some kind of effects to make this impressive. Yeah. Oh, it's not going to work. Mm. <laughs> it's not going to work. The only thing I can think of is you chroma key them. Or yeah. you do an shock type thing where you've got, you know, three camera angles. Oh, yeah. You know, so a terrible split screen yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You'll know this, Roop, probably. Uh, were the uh, Revenge helmets, the Envision helmets, tarred yes. up? Or, yeah, or the new? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Or at least one was used as the basis to make new ones, but basically yeah. it's like the same helmet. Mm. With a rim around the bottom. Yeah. And, and who rim. doesn't love a rim around the bottom? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have that rim. Yeah. For extra comfort. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take it any further. Leave the bottom <laughs> ribbing now. <laughs> Leave the ribbing. This <laughs> is a warning. Return to your business. <laughs> <laughs> or be dispersed. <laughs> Nothing to see here. <laughs> Move along. <laughs> you must be out of your tiny mind. Blink. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, the green cross croton would be brilliant. The green that? cross croton. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Fuck me. That's my day, mate. <laughs> we should make that. <laughs> yes, we should. I'll just get straight on building the croton then, shall I? <laughs> That wasn't very clever, was it? I could do a croton. I can yes. do a croton. Croton's doable. It's just mm. wax. Mm. But for the green cross croton, it might be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Film that, put it out on YouTube. Fantastic. <laughs> Let's go viral. <laughs> the incomprehensible Patreon exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> for anyone who isn't British and was around in the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> Like so much of what we say, yes. Like so much of what we say, so it's absolutely the <laughs> thing, yeah. <laughs> on brand, on brand. This is on brand. <laughs> this is I... not on topic, however. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no we near. Okay, so we're in episode four. Yes. The Cybermen break the aerial, so they're cut off from the earth. Well, they're breaking oh. aerials. They're like bloody hooligans, aren't they? Oh yeah, yeah. They don't like aerials. They're they're like, like, aerials they're like aerials, guys. Yeah. Cyber bombs. Oh yeah, we didn't decide that. So has so in episode three where we get the great cyber exposition, is it Christopher Robbie doing a Canadian accent? Uh, I think it has to be. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's, that's slightly less effective than the original mm-hmm. voice. 
<laughs> it, Put some cyber bombs with him. Yeah. It doesn't matter that they wrecked the aerial because Rene has got another one under the bed of his agent mother. Of course, yeah, he's got flashing knobs and everything going on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the flashing knobs! <laughs> the flashing knobs! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why he goes out. He goes out to, yeah. to dig under the sand to find his, you know, the sand. Well, I suppose it is sand on Mars, I don't know. Yeah. To find his, uh, his his other aerial. He's got a couple of British airmen out there, so I find that he's just... Yeah. Hello, yeah. hello. <laughs> well, maybe they're plague victims. Maybe they've got the veins on their faces. Yeah. Maybe it's yes. and jewels. Yes. Maybe yeah. he's hiding them. <laughs> so the Cybermen can't find them. I don't know sense. how he did all this or when he did all this. <laughs> Whether he should be doing all this, he shouldn't be. He's taking it off the story quite yeah. seriously. Yeah. <laughs> Just a flight of whimsy, listener. Yes. Um, so they cut from the earth. So Winberg uh, is sending a rocket. Mm -hmm. While this is going on, the Cybermen activate Evans. He comes back to life. Is Peter Miles playing Rinberg, the voice of Rinberg? Because okay. the guy who played uh, Dr. Evans played the voice of Rinberg. Ah. To avoid, because he didn't say anything as Evans apart from "oh dear" and fell over at the next so what? Right, yeah. Um, yeah. So that makes just, sense. Yeah, so that, that's a great use of Peter Miles. In. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Mm. Uh, so yeah, Evans attacks Sam, and uh, he kind of he nicks his suit, and then uh, because he's got a slightly different tabard on, he's yeah. able to walk into the control room, even mm -hmm. though he doesn't look like Sam, and he's got a massive <laughs> great helmet on his fucking head and veins yeah. on his face, and none of these presumably yeah. quite highly trained people spot him. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Is someone going to spot him this time? Or does he go through another hole in the wall through a cyber membrane sort of behind it, you know, behind a cupboard? Yeah, yeah. He's carrying the cyber membrane with him to keep himself obscured, maybe. Oh, uh, you know. just can't see what it was. Yeah. I don't know. I can't even see it. <laughs> <laughs> you think it is Helen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of the of Irish. Oh, it's one of those membranes, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> oh, I always wanted a membrane. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say membrane? <laughs> <I panic. laughs> he kind of he goes into the control room he he knocks out benson and uh, he takes over the asteroid deflector mm -hmm. and he fires asteroids at this release ship mm -hmm. blows it away and then that's when they spot him they kind of go ah, evans yeah, yeah. Uh, evans the doctor will be doing that thing of being a bit mysterious and kind of like, did he, did he work it out ages ago and just let them fire asteroids at the ship because he was curious because <laughs> he's a computer and mad now? That's the exciting thing. Nobody in the universe can do what we are doing. There's quite a lot of things that will happen in the, at once uh, at this point, really. Uh, we've got uh, Harry and Sarah barricading the, the medical room. Mm -hmm. We've got Evans, he's kind of out of controls and he won't get out. Um, he's got a cyber going on him so that they don't dare rush him. Have we, have we had the, the Doctor Who's first optical effect yet? Uh, this really? is the point where the Cybermen fire their big gun at the dome. Yeah. And they puncture the dome. Yeah. Um, yes. And Hobson and Benoit fix it with a tea tray. It's a nice <laughs> little scene. Yeah. It's a nice scene. It's a nicely shot, this. Yeah. 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 Quite like believable. It. They must be hellishly strong trays. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I quite well, yeah. This air pressure holds it in place. I quite like that. I mean, yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. It's, yeah. it's very Kit Peddler, isn't it? Yeah, I love the fact that their first attempt is to just stuff a jacket in it, and then they're just gonna go, Oh, well, that, well that be all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's Hobson going, That was my favorite jacket, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it just gets it's sucked off, yeah, it gets sucked off, yes, it gets sucked off, <laughs> and then jacket gets sucked off. <laughs> Episode three, we had chest cheers. Excellent. <laughs> In the meantime, while the base was being sucked off, um, all the air's gone out and Evans has come. Yeah. Yep. So this is a good opportunity to get in there and drag them out. Mm -hmm. And then just to heighten the stakes even more, there's more cyber ships coming in. They're landing. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Probably going to look better. They are just tea trays on, on string. They are a bit danglesome, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. And it's all based, obviously, the same one as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, <laughs> the model work's moved on by this point. It, yeah, probably. What's his name? Who was he doing it at the most point? Um, I think John Friedlander did the effects on Ark in Space. Oh, okay, I was thinking maybe Ian Schoons. All the effects, rather than just making the mask for ones. So, uh, yeah, the Cybermen bring up their really big gun. They've got an even bigger gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is the point where they decide to use their asteroid deflector. Yeah. To deflect them away. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes sense, this doesn't it? Because it yeah. deflects. Deflect them. Yeah. 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 Cybermen be gone. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's quite a bit of drama. They kind of have to point it at the surface, and then they mm-hmm. kind of they flip all the cyber ships into space, all the cybermen into space, mm-hmm. and uh, they all fly off into the sun. Presumably. Win, basically. Ooh. I presume they won't be going Ooh. in this version. They <laughs> might be chroma keyed. Yeah. So yeah, everyone's celebrating. Hobson's happy. Yep. Uh, yeah. And it's a typical Apart scene about a jacket. She's she's you know. Apart from a jacket, she's just yeah. Super about the jacket. Yeah. 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 It's a very typical scene where the, the TARDIS crew just kind of slip out in the background while everyone's having a... Yeah. Kind of, yeah Which I don't think would change. Yeah. Probably yeah. Tom's, Tom's quite prone to doing that. Mm-hmm. And then they get back to the TARDIS where they turn on the time-space visualizer mm-hmm. and show them a clip from their next adventure. Yeah. Mm. Whatever the hell that is. To be confirmed. Yeah. It'd be great if it's Tom Baker's The Macro Terror, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then we can retcon this episode to go, and it's a claw. <laughs> But that's the only bad part about it, though. (laughs) (laughs) Ensplainment. 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 Not really changed much, I guess. It's kind of fitted really well. Yeah. 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 Uh, Great. Good. Shows how similar on a baseline those two doctors are. Mm. Yeah. yeah, they are yeah. both anarchists. We kind of almost always assume that when we get two modern ones, that they're always going to be quite similar. But uh, mm. this is the first kind of two classic era ones that we've had that were also quite similar. So. Mm. Mm. I mean, I think as we said, Tom would be more kind of domineering. Um, yeah, he would. Yeah, a bit yeah. more action orientated. But apart, He'd probably from have that, the occasion yeah. to have a big speech about Homo sapiens and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, really set his doctor in stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah cause you'll, have, you'll have Robert Holmes script editing and therefore writing two thirds of it. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, so it probably wouldn't be similar to this. It'd be <laughs> much more Robert Holmesy. Yeah, I think it'd be very similar in plot. Yeah, the dialogue would change somewhat, but uh, yeah. So, <laughs> is it better or worse than the Trout one? I'd say it's on a par. Actually, it'll be a different beast. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think it's Even probably it's yeah. It's probably a bit of a simplistic plot for nineteen seventy-five. Very sixty-five. Uh, Avengers yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that was the criticism of Revenge of the Cybermen, wasn't it? Was it was yeah. kind of, it wasn't sophisticated enough for what they were doing? Yeah, yeah. You know, absolutely, absolutely. Much more aimed at you know eight-year-olds. Yeah. So um, yeah. So they weren't terribly happy. Being placed anywhere in the season allows us the same excuse, you know, Barry Letts commissioned it. Yeah. I think it'd be good, but I think I'd still prefer the original. I think it would I think it was I think it would score in design in some ways, but not in others, because that whole of the Cybermen on the on the moon surface on the film is really great. It's nice. The original version is 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 so atmospheric actually, is it? It is, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you so is so is Ark in Space. But for an entirely different set of reasons. Yeah, yeah. So Mm. Yeah, yes. it's, it's a tricky one to, to call. I, I think, I'm just going to say they'll be on a par. Yeah. So yeah, I'll give it sort of maybe eight or nine out of ten. I think because it's it's great. I'll give it a I'll give it a a seven. Seven. Yeah, I'd say eight. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Well, should we fling yeah. ourselves into the moor of the land then and see what we're doing next? Yes. 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 Here we go. Right. The Doctor is Peter Davison. Oh. The story... 232. Oh, shit, really? Okay. (laughs) 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 232. I'm not using using my brain. The the time will come. We'll be with it, all right? Right. Two, three, two. No. We've already had it. Bells of St. John. Oh. Ah, balls. Oh, right. Well, then. Rerun. Yeah, I am. Rerunning. 106. Oh, okay. It's Tom Davis' story, is it? No, it's Tom Baker. Probably, yeah. Uh, it will be, because Stones of Blood's 100. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 106 is The Creature from the Pit. Oh! Yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> interesting, yeah. Yes. <laughs> There's not going to be as much blowing. No. 
No, um, best glory. It may well be a good thing. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Imagine okay, that cool. in a bit more eighties. So yeah, okay. Creature yeah. from the pit with Peter Davison. Hmm. Yeah, I like the creature from the pit. I like the creature from the pit. Yeah, yeah, I like the creature from the pit. Yeah. I'm thinking season yeah. twenty for some reason. It'll liven it up. Yeah. And again, we don't we don't know what else is in season twenty at the moment. So well, yeah, season twenty might be amazing. You don't know. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate season twenty. It just a lot of it seems nondescript. Mm. Yeah. It's not the anniversary season it should have been. No. The one after you've got, you know, you open with the sign the Hyrians and the Sea Devils, and then you've got the Daleks halfway through. Yeah. And you have the regeneration. That's that's a great anniversary season. Yeah. <laughs> Just a year too late. They've got it wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. no. No, they are wrong. <laughs> You're out of your tiny minds. Your season is incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you have been listening to Time Ram. I've been Barry Williams. And with me tonight have been Paul Ferry. Hi. And Rupert Booth. As always. Discussing Doctor Who in the moon base. Yeah, we need to thank Ben Jones for doing our music. Do please consider joining us on Twitter using the hashtag Time Ram. I'm on there as at Baz Time Ram. Rupert is at Rupert Booth and Paul is at Paul Ferry 8. We also have our own Facebook site and various other sites around the interweb. Do check them out. Uh, you can also find us on Patreon, where if you want to get involved, you can help us pay some production costs of this podcast. And do please consider leaving us a review, preferably a nice review, somewhere where you get your podcast from, like Apple Podcasts, somewhere like that. See you back. <laughs> See you back. I don't know. See you back. See you back. I've lost the ability <laughs> to speak English. Maybe that's Russian Geordie. But... <laughs> <laughs> See you back. See you back. See you, Batman. See you, Batman. Oh, I'll see you, Batman. Yeah, pet. <laughs> Lost for Danny, yeah, pet. Oh, I should mention I went to see the new Ant Man movie. All oh, right, yes. Quite enjoyed it. But the bit that really got me going was in the trailers. There's a trailer for the new Shazam movie. <laughs> All right. The villain is being played by Helen Mirren. <laughs> and I must admit, I got quite excited. <laughs> Excellent. What yeah. Helen. What <laughs> Helen. <laughs> nice to see if she's getting other work out of, outside Doctor Who. Direction point. Direction point. A Doctor Who podcast network. <laughs>